Welcome to MPM's Costa Rican Rainforest Exhibit. This tropical rainforest is one of the most biodiverse areas of the world. Biodiversity is another name for the variety and variability of life on Earth. One aspect of biodiversity is the unique adaptations animals have to help them survive in their environment. In this video, we encourage you to look closer at some of our favorite rainforest exhibit residents and the amazing adaptations they have that help them survive, which entails staying alive, finding food, and reproducing. Before we get started, let's define a few words we're going to be using today. Adaptations are special characteristics plants and animals and other forms of life have that help them survive individually as a species. Bio means life. Therefore, biodiversity is a word used to talk about the many different types of plants and animals in an environment, the diversity of life. Rainforests are one of the most biodiverse places on the planet. Sometimes different species have evolved together to create adaptations that help them both survive together. We'll see many examples of coevolution in the rainforest. The plants and animals of the rainforest and Wisconsin's forest are very different because they need different adaptations to survive in very different climates. Let's look at some differences between these habitats. Rainforest trees are taller and closer together than those in Wisconsin. This is because the rainforest has good conditions for growing lots of water, about 200 inches per year, compared to only 30 inches per year in Wisconsin, and a lot of sunlight, 12 hours a day all year long. The rainforest is also very warm, around 80 degrees all year round. But all those plants compete for space. The taller a tree is, the more sunlight it will get and the more seeds it will produce. Why do seeds matter? because new trees grow from seeds and all living things, including trees, can pass their adaptations on to the next generation. Wisconsin trees have deeper roots. There's less rain in Wisconsin than in the rainforest, so the roots here go much deeper to find water. In addition, there are more nutrients deeper in the soil in Wisconsin, so the deeper the roots go, the more seeds the tree can produce. In the rainforest, most of the nutrients and water are quickly absorbed by plants. There are not many nutrients in the soil, so deep roots would not be as useful as they are in Wisconsin. All forests have layers. In Wisconsin, forests have a canopy and a herb and shrub layer. Rainforests have these same layers, plus an extra shrub layer and a very tall layer called the emergent layer. Plants and animals often evolve to be most successful or have the most offspring in different layers of the rainforest. The emergent layer is inhabited by very tall trees. Although they get lots of sun, they have to be very strong to resist high winds. The canopy also gets a lot of sun and rain, but less wind than the emergent layer, and that's why many of the animals and plants of the rainforest live in this section. There are even plants called epiphytes, which grow on other plants instead of soil. We'll talk more about those later. This aerial view shows two types of biodiversity. Our Wisconsin forests are limited to a few species of tree, with many individuals of each species. In the rainforest, there are many species of tree, each represented by a few individuals. Biodiversity is important because it helps sustain an environment if something bad were to happen to one species, like a disease. Consider what would happen if all of the dark green trees in Wisconsin died compared to the red trees in the rainforest. How might plants and animals be affected differently in each? What adaptations do you see the jaguar having that might help it to survive? When the sun shines through the rainforest leaves, like we can see here on the floor, it creates bright and dark spots. The jaguar's rosettes, which are its spots, make a great camouflage in the dappled light, allowing them to hide from prey. Jaguars have padded paws that help them move silently through the forest to stalk prey, including armadillos, capybaras, deer, squirrel, birds, and even snails. They will also snatch fish, turtles, and young caiman from the water. These windows show some of the nocturnal animals found in the rainforest. These animals are active at night as it makes them harder to be seen and therefore avoid being eaten. To be active at night, however, requires one to be able to see in the dark. To do this, some animals, like the paca, have evolved large eyes to get in more light and see at night. Bats use a different adaptation called echolocation to help them see insects in the dark. Through echolocation, bats send out sound waves that bounce off nearby objects. The bat's ears hear the return sound waves, and bats use this information to tell where the objects are. We only see a few bats on display here, but there are over 100 species found in Costa Rica. Bats have one of the most important roles in the rainforest. 
While they are known for eating insects, many bats eat nectar from flowers and fruit, dispersing seeds and pollen that help the plants reproduce. Flowers that bloom at night, like this one on display, are white or pale colored to better attract pollinators in the dark jungle, just like this bat and these moths. Natural selection happens when animals and plants have adaptations that give them a better chance to survive and reproduce. Their offspring inherit these adaptations and will also pass them down to the next generation. Some adaptations can actually be a disadvantage, as we'll see in this window. Look at these predators. What do the frogs they are eating have in common? The paler frogs are easiest to see and therefore most likely to attract a predator's attention and be eaten before they can reproduce. This will mean less white frogs in the next generation. The brown frogs, on the other hand, have camouflaged against the dirt and are more likely to live long enough to create more brown offspring. Like the brown frogs, two-toed sloths blend in with their environment, but rather than evolving to have green fur, they have formed a relationship with another species, which is called co-evolution. There are actually three species here that have evolved to benefit one another. An algae gives the sloth a green tint, camouflaging it and protecting it from predators. The sloth's fur provides moisture and shelter for the algae to grow and provides a home for sloth moths, which fertilize the algae. Finally, the moth will lay its eggs in the sloth's droppings. Bird beaks are an easy-to-see example of adaptations. Different species of birds eat different types of food, and their beaks are shaped in ways that help them get that food. Notice how different the toucan and parrot beaks are. Toucan's long beaks are best adapted to pick fruits, whereas parrot's short, sharp beaks are adapted to crack hard nuts and seeds. The leafcutter ant and the fungus shown here are another example of coevolution, like the sloth and the algae. Each ant is carrying a portion of a leaf it has cut from a tree. Across the pathway, you can see ants descending to an underground den they filled with fungus. The ants don't actually eat the leaves they carry. Instead, in another example of coevolution, the leaves are used as food for the fungus, which the ants then eat and feed to their larvae. The ants are farming the fungus. Our final stop, the tank bromeliad, is a wonderful example of adaptations and coevolution in the rainforest. The tank bromeliad is an epiphyte, or a plant that lives on another plant. By living up high in the tree branches, it gets more sunlight and rainwater than it can on the rainforest floor. This is also an example of a small ecosystem. The plants and animals that are shown here depend on the tank bromeliad to stay alive. The damselfly feeds on insects in the water in the center of the plant. The frog lays eggs in the tank and caterpillars feed on its leaves. How many different species can you find living inside? I hope you enjoyed looking through the rainforest with me and learning more about the adaptations and biodiversity of the rainforest. Be sure to look closely as you explore on your own. You never know what you'll find.